we're geeking out to the max here, aren't we? Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Might as well just stick my fingers up my ass, sick up and lick it up. <laughs> Christ. I've never had such um, open geekness. That's what it's about. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Geeky Blinders podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Rob. And we are Geeky Blinders. Uh, normally we customise trainers, uh, but we've decided to have a go at doing a podcast. Every episode we're going to interview a celebrity or famous person and we're going to talk about their top 10 films or TV shows. We're also going to give them a little quiz on their top 10 films or TV shows to see how much they really know about them and discuss geek culture. At the end of the podcast we uh, present them with a pair of shoes that we've created. We've done one each and they have to decide whose is better so that we can keep a tally of who is actually better. <laughs> Even though we already know. <laughs> uh, we'll also this week be doing a giveaway at the end, so make sure you stay tuned right to the end. You can win yourself a pair of Geeky Blinders custom shoes worth 220 quid. It's not too bad. Um, this week, we have started with the one and only Keith Lemon, uh, which was a perfect start for us, I yeah, think. Definitely. Uh, the ultimate geek, and he, I think, really enjoyed geeking out, and uh, I hope you listen to, enjoy listening to it. Um, yeah. Like, I, I remember a little while, last series of Juiced, they wanted me, uh, as Santa Claus, to come out of the Scotch Egg Club um, with a, a false stick on and rip it off and tomato ketchup fly out. I went, on a Christmas special, let me get this <laughs> bit. On a Christmas special, you want me dressed as Santa Claus, rip me dick off and blood come out of it. I said, I can't do that because I've got to do a school run in the morning and I'll be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be embarrassed when all parents look at me and go, there he is, <laughs> ripping his false dick off and... And spraying blood everywhere whilst dressed as Santa, ruining kids' dreams. <laughs> That's where the line is. <laughs> if any kid watched it and said, is that the real Santa, Daddy? Has he, has he pulled his tail off? <laughs> has, has Santa not got a tail now, Daddy? <laughs> a tail. That's what I used to call it. When I used to be a break dancer when I was a kid. And I'd, ah, I've hurt myself. Where have you, have you banged your tail? <laughs> yeah, banged my tail. <laughs> I'd often bang my tail when I was a break dancer when I was a kid. <laughs> I don't want to know how. Yeah. <laughs> I carried a massive tail when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew into it and now it's just normal sized. <laughs> it had a grow growing spur at the wrong age. It grew into a man's willy when I was eight. <laughs> You're not banging it on anything. I thought, hey, <laughs> I've got a man's willy, me. And now I am. Oh. I've got now I've got a nine year old's willy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I'm offending any nine year olds out there. <laughs> I think it's safe with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, do you, do you start You've got a, have you got a labyrinth <laughs> t shirt on? I have, yeah. Um, so our makeup artist that we use for prosthetics, the first he works on films. I always think, why do you work with me? <laughs> 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 But the first film he worked on um, was Labyrinth. Oh, really? That's pretty good. Stuff. When he was yeah, 19. When he was 19. And he also did the makeup for Jack Nicholson in Batman 89. That's a good And he CC gave me already. a piece whilst we were filming Sketch Show in a little glass box. He says, Here, you'll appreciate this more than me. I've had it for how long. You'll probably put it on one of your shelves. And um, I looked at it for a second. I, I thought he'd given me a prosthetic vagina. And then I, I suddenly turned it. I went, oh, it's Jack Nicholson's face. The corner, it was corner of his mouth. It looked like oh, a little quid. Oh, uh, amazing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have that now. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. He's got a very good CV. Yeah, it's good start. Right? He has, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's done a lot of wicked films and some silly things with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the peak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, shall we, uh, shall we go through these films then, yeah? Yeah. Start, start yeah. at number 10. Napoleon Dynamite. At number 10, it's Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> what an amazing film. Um, John Head, is it Header? Is that how you say his name? Yeah, John Header. So. That's how we Hedder. say it. Yeah. Um, I remember sorry. watching it. I, I, I saw the trails for it uh, when it came out, and I was in New York. Um, I think it might have been my anniversary with my missus. And um, we were in New York, and I went, Oh, look, that's that Napoleon Dynamite film. Because it was a time when you go to, every time you went to America, I would buy as many DVDs as I could because there'd be DVDs out there that weren't out here. Mm. And now, you know, you just buy them anywhere now. You know, Region 1 ones. Yeah, it, was region yeah. one, it was a Region 1 copy I bought. And we yeah. took it back to the hotel. And for a, a, a first, I guess, three, four minutes, we didn't laugh at all. And we just, if you listen to this on your podcast, you can't just see what my face is doing. But I was just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Which is, face. I'm doing a face of sort of, what is this? What is this? 
And then suddenly, I can't remember what he did, but we pissed ourselves. We pissed ourselves and we laughed all so all the way through it to the point, you know, when your throat feels like you've got a lump in it. Yeah. We were like, we're like, oh, my throat's hurting. We're laughing. And we, there's no jokes in Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite. It's just the obscurity of it that, yeah. that is funny. And when his uncle throws that steak at him when he's on a bike, <laughs> the noise it makes when it hits him in the face. Yeah. But when he comes to, I can't remember the name of the actor who plays his uncle, but when he sits back down on the steps, he laughs. And um, I said to him, I went, that's a real laugh. He's not <laughs> acting that yeah. laugh. That's, he's laughed that he's just thrown a piece of steak at John Hedder's face. Yeah. <laughs> he enjoyed that. But yeah, it's a great film. It's timeless because you don't know what, ta- what era it's set in either. I don't know if it come out in 2004, I think. I think, and um, but it's not it's not like set in the eighties. It's just timeless. It's so yeah. weird, and um, yeah, it's a fantastic film. And he permed his hair um, for the for the film yeah. as well, <laughs> which I think is a bold move. And uh, <laughs> my missus once went dressed as Napoleon Dynamite in one of those last minute costumes. She went, oh, I don't know what to wear um, when it was Halloween, and I said, um, wear that Pedro t shirt. I've got um, vote for Pedro. And just put a curly wig on and go as um, Napoleon Dynamite. And she looked at this, but she said she she knew what it felt like to be a not so attractive boy. <laughs> she, she couldn't get served at the bar. She couldn't get served at the bar. They're just ignoring her. But I think a, a lot of her friends thought she was really cool because she didn't wear somewhat sexy. You know when they have these sexy yeah. versions of Halloween costumes, like a sexy yeah. Wonder Woman. Uh, I mean, even Wonder Woman is sexy. Have, have you seen yeah, your yeah. Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman. Yeah. 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 Mind blowing! I'm just besotted when I when I watch her. I, the first time I saw the first Wonder Woman, I was like, um, "Oh, thought she'd have an American accent." Wonder Woman, you, you always imagine her to have an American accent, don't you? Mm-hmm. And, and um, but then just besotted by her because she's incredible looking. And um, Wonder Woman eighty four, uh, my mate slurred it a bit. He says it's not very good. And that, so in my mind, I thought I'll watch this. It won't be very good. But I really enjoyed it. It's silly and fun. And I sound like one of I sound like Lorraine Kelly now. Um, it's just a tonic for this. It's just it was just a tonic for these sort of times that we're going through. <laughs> it was just a tonic. <laughs> it did. I, I right enjoyed it. And the beginning. I don't know if you've seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. good. Yeah. When there's that chase at the beginning, the the race, the beginning when she's little, yeah, she, little she kid. Girl, yeah. Oh, that, the beginning is the best bit. But when the the jumping over those big spike things. Yeah. My balls went right into my chest because <laughs> yeah. I just imagined falling off that and just hitting your knackers on, on, the, on the spike. Uh, but yeah, it, um, another mate of mine said, it's too long. I went in, I could watch her for days. And, yeah. and he went, yeah, but she was flying for ages. I went, I know, that's when I started laughing. Because <laughs> she, she just remembered how to fly. A, a boyfriend who was, an ex, who was a pilot in the war told her about flying and she just remembered. Remember? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling the wind underneath the wings. I put my arms out. That's how you fly. <laughs> Imagine if we just spoke to a pilot. Can you tell us how to fly? And then he did, and then we could. <laughs> and then when she really got the grasp, it, she thought she just started doing Superman poses while she was flying. Yeah. But I enjoyed her with a new a power that we've never heard of before. And also the power that she didn't bring in Justice League, where you could yeah. have really used it. But nah, yeah. just leave that. <laughs> I forgot. Again, and that, I forgot anyway, again. now she can put her invisible plane on eBay, can't she? Because <laughs> she doesn't need it anymore. She can fly. <laughs> so in the next Wonder Woman film, which I'm sure there'll be another one, um, I hope she's flying. Because again, you can't just forget. Yeah. Like in no. Oh, no, Wonder Woman too. She, didn't she get the power of flight? Yeah. She should be flying all the time. If I could fly, I was talking to my agent about it yesterday. If I could fly, I would fly like an inch off the floor, stood up, just straight. So I just look like I'm hovering like Dracula. <laughs> and I, I would just travel like that all the time, just just floating an inch off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> If there's a pebble, I might go an inch and a half just so I don't yeah. fall over. <laughs> like you're on your skateboard when you hit a pebble. Skateboards, <laughs> I love skateboards. But yeah, hitting a stone is the worst thing in it. You think, they should have designed them better. I've been knocked <laughs> off by a tiny pebble. <laughs> <laughs> Shit skateboards. <laughs> now I'll just have them on my walls. I, I do travel to the shop now and again to get bread and milk, but I don't do tricks. Um, Because I'm just embarrassed um, if I fall off and stuff. Now and again, I might do an ollie off a curb. Um, But I can't pull it off like I used to. When I was a kid, I was really good. And then I I I think I was skateboarding from when I was about about eight or nine until I was um, 
about 19 and then I stopped and I started again when I was about 23 and I was shit and everyone was doing, <laughs> and everyone was doing stuff that like blew my mind like wall rides and stuff and I went I can't do this you know so now I just have them on my wall sorry I've gone right off we were talking <laughs> about Napoleon Dynamite when we in it is film <laughs> <laughs> they should do Napoleon Dynamite too, where he moves to the city. Um, um, I think you should move to New York and get a job. It'd be funny seeing him the first day his new job, wouldn't it? I think Napoleon Dynamite. That's one of the films where I think, yeah, definitely do a sequel rather than leave it. Yeah. But I've always supported the same with E.T. Got to do E.T. too. It just sounds shit, doesn't it? E.T. too. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel compelled to say E.T. too, electric boogaloo. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. but um et's got to come back haven't they what he's just like yeah earth was good and i fell in love with a boy which was a bit weird <laughs> but i'm never gonna go there again ever of course he's come back in it come oh, back no, and see elliot wouldn't he? Well, this is going on yeah yeah no he's not is he yeah <laughs> he's, he's stay there go stay wherever maybe he's in dubai for work reasons <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird everyone having to go at these influencers um, in Dubai? I just think, look, they haven't done anything illegal. Um, if you what, what they should do is not let anyone leave the country. Then yeah, if exactly. they went, then the bastards. Yeah. But um, they, they've been allowed to get on a plane. They haven't sneaked on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're lying. Then they're lying saying, oh, it's for work reasons. I'm an influencer and I have to show people this bikini I'm wearing on the beach. <laughs> and, um... But they're just having an holiday, aren't they? Yeah, and exactly, yeah. spreading COVID everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, everyone's just vexed at them because they're having an holiday, but they just shouldn't yeah. be allowed to fly. I don't think we should let anyone in or out until it's done. That's what, yeah, that's exactly, what I yeah. think. But um, <laughs> someone can fly. They're going to fly out. So these single, young single ladies uh, or men, they're, they're, they're going to go out there. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, and then it's just middle-aged people like me going fucking wankers. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't been saying that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, just just shouldn't let people fly. Don't want to get all political because I'll say the wrong thing and get uh, <laughs> some, someone will be offended and have to apologise. Yeah, you've been what? the Daily Mail as well. Yeah, yeah. Sort of Napoleon Dynamite's a good film. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Next, it's it. so hard to put. I think it's so hard to choose your favourite ten. Because there's a lot of good films and you like them for different reasons. But yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is an amazing film. Um, I can remember my mate went to New York when we were at school. I think he's the only kid that had been to America when we were kids. And he was posh. Because we, I, I didn't go abroad until I was about 20. I didn't get on a plane until I was about yeah. 20. And uh, But he went to New York. He had family in New York. And he came back and told us about Ferris Bueller and this ace film about Ferris Bueller, and, but although he didn't sell it that well, I went, oh, what happens in this film then? Oh, he, he, he bunks off school. Oh, it sounds ace. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine pitching that idea now? It's about a kid who bunks off school and has a rad day. Everyone will go, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Same with Breakfast Club. Oh, it's about some kids in detention. Nah. Got, yeah. Has it got any superheroes in it? Any gangsters? No. <laughs> What's just kids in detention? Yeah. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Um, won't, won't get commissioned because different kind of film back then, won't it? But yeah. Ferris Bueller is amazing. He's super cool. He wears rad clothes. I actually have the outfit he wears, um, which I compiled before you could buy it as a fancy dress costume on um, one of these websites. Um, so I've got a proper leather jacket that's a replica of his, which I bought off. I think it's called Magnolia Clovery or something. It's somewhere in America where they make jackets for your you know, replicas. Yeah. And I can remember wearing the full outfit one New Year's Day and um, going for lunch um, with my neighbour. Um, should I name drop? I won't bother yeah. name dropping. Um, but she said, uh, her fella said to me afterwards, said that she said, I won't say name. Um, she said, um, what was Keith wearing? And he, he said, oh, he was dressed as Ferris Bueller, wasn't he? <laughs> and, oh, he looked a bit odd, didn't he? <laughs> so, like, I, had, I was dressed as Ferris Bueller, and I just thought his clothes are so cool. You could wear that thing because and not look like a costume. Mm. Yeah. And same with um, what's you know Finn in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. And um, John Boyega, his yeah. his outfit in um, Force Awakens. 
Remember? Yeah, jacket. Yeah. yeah, I've got that jacket, and I just thought oh. I could dress like that, and it won't look like a costume. And that, so, I don't, not, since then, I've just started wearing costumes just to see if people know that I'm wearing a costume <laughs> or if I've got actual clothes on. Just wearing something that's out of the film, the whole outfit. Yeah. You're going to see how far you can take it. Yeah, yeah because I've, I've dressed as Cameron a few <laughs> times from Back to the Future as well. Right. I go, I like your top, and I go, and I go, I'm in fancy dress, I'm dressed as Cameron from Paris <laughs> Gilbert's Day Off. In every, that's why I've got these shit moccasins on, <laughs> <laughs> with white socks and chinos, and the I, red I, wing I, and the red wing top that he wears. Have you seen um, Drive with Ryan Gosling? Yeah, I have, but I can't remember much about it. He, he wears a jacket and it's got like a scorpion. Yeah, I've got that jacket. Was he? I wanted when I seen when I saw that. Obviously, I was like, I'm going to get that jacket because it's cool. And then I thought, that's because Ryan Gosling's wearing that jacket. If I wore that jacket, I'm just a fat, dumpy man in the jacket. No, scorpion. you've got to own it though. You've got to own it when you wear something. <laughs> like just own it and go. When someone goes, have you got Ryan Gosling's drive jacket on? Yes, I fucking have. And don't I look? Like that. <laughs> now shut the fuck up and get me a pint. And um, you've got to own it. I think because yeah. weird because my mate when I think when I turned um. When I, oh, I've never said my age on telly or anywhere. Anyway, when I turned a certain age, um, <laughs> I said to my mates, I said, I'm wearing whatever I want now. I don't care. And my mates went, yeah, we've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you big fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> we thought boy George just walked into the pub. <laughs> Fuck you. And boy George wears ace clothes as well, so I'll dress like him if I want. But yeah, you've just got to own it, haven't you? But I've got that jacket. You've got you it. can get that off eBay. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had a look, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an ace jacket on eBay, a Warriors one. It was just a biker jacket, uh, but it had the Warriors skull and wings on the back. Yeah. I wish I'd have got it, because they don't sell it now. And um, no. They did a Cobra Kai one as well, just a plain black biker jacket, but with Cobra Kai on the back. And it was about yeah. 100 quid. I should have got it, man. Because I, I got a good... You know how sometimes it's um like shops that sell on eBay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I got I found the website. All oh, right, I'll just go straight to the shop. And they went, Oh, we don't make them anymore. Well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now because of Cobra Kai. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. it's big show on Netflix now. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? That um YouTube had it on YouTube and they just let it go to Netflix and it blew up. Yeah. But I, I don't know anyone who subscribes to YouTube, the premium, to watch stuff on there. And I don't even know what's on there. No, you get about five hours a day on it though. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, it's constantly popping up every time you open the YouTube app. It's like, do you want to go premium? No, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's not, not like I haven't Googled myself on YouTube. How <laughs> many views I'm getting for Keith Lemon's doings. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he takes a day off, doesn't he? And it's an amazing film. If, if I took a day off when I was his age, what would I have done? I'd have gone to mate's house, would have played Jurassic Park on Mega Drive, and um, we might, might have gone to Swinging Woods. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but I actually never uh, took a day off school because I enjoyed school. I didn't learn anything. But my art teacher said, would say, do you want to go to maths? And I go, not really, sir. Oh, I'll phone ahead and just say that you're staying in the art room. I go, okay. That's why I didn't learn anything. But um, they just used to let me stay in the art room and not do the lessons. That's all right. Then. And um, I came out um, thick as a spaniel. And um, <laughs> but I can draw pretty good and make gizmos with changeable faces. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out all right. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it's a great film. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the, yeah, it's got really super bland hair, I always thought, for someone so cool. Oh, and I especially guess. back then when you see other extras in the background that have got like really cool punk hair and stuff. Yeah. Ferris Bueller, who's the raddest dude in school, just got like <laughs> boy hair. <laughs> Straightforward boy hair. Yeah. Uh, which again, doesn't go with someone who would wear a beret. And a jacket made up of three different colors, leather jacket made of three different colors. You're wearing that jacket and a beret, and you've just got boy hair. Yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> think of any. I've got no ideas for me hair. I, I'm, I'm into the hat and the jacket, but I've got no ideas for me hair. Oh, well, yeah. just leave it right normal then. <laughs> normal haired bastard. <laughs> you normal haired bastard. <laughs> and he's, and obviously, is. Um, girlfriend is it simone she yeah, she would call simone um was incredibly fit as well and she she had she looked cool as well with a fringing on her jacket and she was also in legend with tom cruise Woo! Wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> that was a spot on impression remember, remember legend that, that was a quick impression 
when me and Paddy did Top Gun for Keith and Paddy's pitch show, we decided I should be Tom Cruise, even though not in the past, Paddy had always been the handsome man and I was always the lady. I said, I don't want to be a lady all the time. I don't want to be a lady all the time. And Tom Cruise is really small, so it should be me. And I mean, yeah. what are you going to do? Wear a wig and that's it. I said, Tom Cruise should have a big, big hooter and wonky teeth. <laughs> and, um, so we got the look down and I remember the morning we were going to film I just thought I hadn't even thought about how to be Tom Cruise how do I be him and I just watched loads of interviews of Tom Cruise I didn't watch I wasn't watching Top Gun because I already knew Top Gun but I was watching interviews of Top of um, Tom Cruise and then we on the morning when I got to um, we were filming at Pinewood and I just went to the director this is what I'm going to do and then I did it and he went yeah do that and then I think by the end of it, I went, there was one sentence I did. I went, Paddy, listen to this sentence. And I went, I sound just like Tom Cruise, don't I? <laughs> no. No, you don't. <laughs> I, went, I do. <laughs> I do. We were filming on um, Canberra Sands Beach. It was freezing and we were doing the volleyball scene and we had no tops on. I can't tell you how cold it was. We, um, and we, what we were going to do is tie it in with when we filmed Jaws. We did a spoof of Jaws as well. Yeah. And um, we were going to film it in South Africa, I think. But back then, Paddy was scared of flying and wouldn't go. So we ended up in um, winter on Canberra Sands. <laughs> and that's it, soft. And I was like, this, this is your fault. This is your fault. <laughs> yeah. But he's since had some sort of therapy. And now can fly because he goes all over the world for top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I guess if you're getting paid enough, you'll go on a plane. <laughs> That's where you went wrong. <laughs> yeah. But it was a lovely time know? filming that show. Uh, I wish we could have done know? Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but I guess I'd have been Simone, his girlfriend. <laughs> Are you going to watch the new Top Gun film when it comes out? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But uh, actually, I, just, I wasn't a big Top Gun fan, really. Oh, really? I, I mean, I love Tom Cruise, but. I, I thought Top Gun was a lot of airplanes flying about. <laughs> a bit bored. That is the plot, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's all right when he's getting off with a girl and he's on his motorbike and he looks cool on his bike with that jacket on. We all wanted yeah. that jacket as well, didn't we? <laughs> and um, But it was a lot of planes just flying around and I thought, this is boring. <laughs> it's boring. There's a, there's a lot more better um, Tom Cruise films, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely yeah. I like Interview with a Vampire. I think that's a nice film. But it's not in my top 10. It's so hard to make a top 10 films. Too hard. It is, yeah. We um, we were doing, our, we're, quite a while ago, we had a group chat with each other and obviously a, a brother, brother and a friend and that. And we were all sending each of our top 10s. And that was where we got the idea for this. So obviously everyone yeah. was talking about their top 10 and stuff. Yeah. So we got the yeah. number eight. Spider-Man 2. Spider Again, Spider-Man yeah. 2. Electric Boogaloo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> imagine if it didn't call that. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I was very excited for the Spider the original Sam Raimi one to come out. I've been waiting for it for years. Um, many, many, many years ago, I had a poster um, of the Spider-Man film that was going to be made by Canon. Um, and they, I don't know if they lost funding for it or whatever. It didn't happen, but I've still got that poster somewhere. And um, never came out, never came out. So the, it became the Sam Raimi one that came out. Many, I mean, like 10, 20 years or something, I had this poster yeah. waiting for Spider-Man. And I got to go to a special screening of it. And I just thought it was mind-blowing because I thought, oh, I guess they've been waiting to do it. So they've got the um, this technology to make him look yeah. like he's actually climbing up walls and stuff. And then... By Spider-Man 2, Electric Boogaloo, um, it just got better. The effects got better. And I just thought it was amazing, especially when he stops that train with his webs. Yeah. I teared up. I teared up when <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> saved the day. <laughs> but the, the thing is, I've never been a big fan of the villains that have been in right. the Spider-Man films. You know, and, and Dr. Octopus looked great and stuff. But again, he's just, he's just like a middle-aged man, isn't he? And it's like, no. much, yeah. Yeah, when you get, get your tentacles on, just get them on. <laughs> and uh, quite a scary idea, I guess, a middle-aged man with tentacles. And uh, he'd, probably, he'd probably definitely rip Santa's dick off, I guess. <laughs> he wouldn't think twice. So Jealousy that everyone loves him. I don't want to say, I'll rip his fucking dick off. And, um, but, yeah, I think T Toby Maguire is my Spider-Man, I right, think. Right. Um, I, although Tom Holland, I, I guess they, they all just brought different things to it. I think Andrew Gar 
Sparfield is um, he's a bit cool, I think. And yeah, Sp- yeah. He, Toby Maguire is the ultimate geek in all of those. I think yeah. Tom Holland's a really good actor. I think, um, but uh, Toby Maguire is the geekiest Spider Man. And I, obviously, I've heard the rumors that in Spider Man Three, it's going to go a bit like into the Spider Verse, where they're yeah. all going to be there. And I do, and I'll be honest, I do like them all. I like Andrew Garfield, an amazing Spider Man. I went to the premiere of that, and he was walking in as I was walking in, and um, he looked at me. And you never know if people are going to know who you are. Um, you, I, I didn't imagine Andrew Garfield while I was putting his Spider Man suit on, watching ITV2, watching <laughs> Celebrity Juice <laughs> whilst he's putting it on. Uh, but he looked at me and he went, Hey, I went, Hey, he, he went, um, Big fan. I went, Oh, thanks. Cheers. This is, um, I'm also a big fan. Well, let's see if I am after this film. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I came out of watching Amazing Spider-Man. And I said, no, wrong with that. Thought we were great. And um, I'm sure a lot of Spider-Man fans back then also liked it. It's not until they digest it a little bit, bit and go, actually, I didn't like it. You know, it's like when we watch, re-watched The Phantom Menace and all those films, you go, is this a Mega Drive game? <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a Mega Drive game, yeah. but you know what? What, what, what did um, Phantom Menace give us? It gave us Darth Maul, who was amazing and so weird that they killed him off straight away. Yeah, yeah, it's a if, if they kept him in a bit more as the Darth Vader character, yeah. I just think, and got rid of the Mega Drive backgrounds because <laughs> <laughs> it was it were all the same colors, wasn't it? I don't know, just yeah, something didn't no, sit yeah, right, and stuff. um. But yes, Spider Man Two is the best. Is my favorite Spider Man film. I think. How do you feel about Spider Man Three? Obviously, people were a bit. Again, I was excited oh. by that. I thought they put Venom in there, but they just squashed too many villains. Uh, out of all the villains, I just thought um, a Sandman is good and Venom is good. Won't bothered about New Goblin. <laughs> what what should <laughs> call this one? Let's call him New Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I won't bother about him. Um, What's his name? James Franco. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wasn't bothered about that setup. It was just like a snowboarder in the sky, wasn't he, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I thought I, then I thought Venom looked good. I did. I liked I liked the look of it. The worst bit was um I don't like slurring things, but there was an actress that played the news reporter oh, whilst nice. um, um Venom had caught uh Mary Jane in the taxi and it was strung between a building. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, there's a news report. She's going, Oh, it's horrible up there. Oh, it's <laughs> devastating. I can't remember which, what shit words she used. Um, but the acting was terrible. And I thought, Why have they got an English news anchor in New York? Surely it would be someone from New York. But the acting wasn't very good there. But yeah, I, li- I liked the effects in it. I liked what um, Sam and Lights looked like. And then I did like Venom, of course, to uh, prefer um, what's his name's Ven- Tom Hardy. Venom. Tom. Tom Hardy's Venom. I, I like the look of that better because it looks like Venom, doesn't it? I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the next Venom film. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Morbius as well. Uh, I don't yeah, know if you've seen the trailer for Morbius, but yeah, when he Jared runs Lennon, down yeah. the alleyway, or if you're from Leeds, when he runs down the ginnel. <laughs> What's a fucking ginnel, mate? <laughs> a, a ginnel is like an alleyway. Uh, <laughs> um, there's a poster of Spider-Man in the background that says murderer. You go, ooh, what's that about? Uh, that's quite cool. Um, but I, again, in the Spider-Man cartoons, I liked Morbius as well with his yeah. little suckers on his hands. Yeah, it was different I remember the comics, him having little... it? it was suckers, yeah. He had suckers, didn't he? Yeah. yeah <laughs> little suckers <laughs> on his hands. <laughs> Much more and, um, but yeah, Spider-Man 3, I thought, I can't, I, I thought it was all right. I, I didn't hate, like, I don't, I don't hate things. You know when people go, oh, they shouldn't remake this or that? I go, yeah, they should. If it's good, it's yeah. good. Might yeah. be good. You know, when they remade Nightmare on Elm Street, if we'd never seen any other Nightmare on Elm Streets, we'd have liked yeah. that film probably. You'd have gone, yeah, we're good. But I think I definitely think they should do another Gremlins film. I think yeah. it'd be amazing now with um, the effects, what they'd yeah, be able yeah. to do. Because as much as I love Gremlins and and they what they look like, they I think the Gremlins look light, and it, and right. imagine to be dangerous, they should be quite heavy. Yeah, I don't know about as heavy as a chimp. <laughs> and, and they, they do look like gremlins look like you can just push them away go shut up yeah, just give them a kick. Uh, even though i think gizmo looks quite realistic in gremlins too they all just look like puppets even though i love rick baker who did them did all the effects for that um but they just look a bit silly but i think 
second one is a parody of the first one, isn't it, really? And yeah. the first Gremlins is like a, a lovely fairy tale. It's a little bit like um, A Wonderful Life, but a dark version of it. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, so is Back to the Future. What about uh, like a wonderful the life in it? of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Did you watch that? Yeah, I did like that. But I just kept thinking like, whilst I was watching it all the way through, is this 3D? They didn't give us glasses. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it was supposed to be 3D. Didn't it? Yeah, the weird yeah. animation. It's meant to be like a comic, uh, But it looked it? ace yeah. as well. But I think as a series of stills, it looks ace. But when you're watching it, it looks like, should we wear 3D glasses for this? <laughs> <laughs> like it's off, like the colours are offset or something. Yeah. Something looks yeah, yeah, like it should different. be 3D. But yeah, I thought it was great. I did. I, I did like it. Yeah, I'd be fan of that. Yeah, it's one of my favourites. Yeah. And, and I, it's funny, I, um, I own a, a couple of Spider-Man suits. I say a couple. I've, I've got double figures in, in Spider-Man suits. <laughs> I can remember seeing um, Tom Holland and uh, actually, I spoke to his dad first, and I said, how do you feel about um, your son becoming Spider-Man? He says, I'm really proud, but I'm a bit scared as well, what, what might become of him. Because it is a big deal, isn't yeah, it, taking yeah, on a, a character like that. And you can, you know, people can go, you were shit, and they ate you, yeah. wish you were dead, because you didn't portray it the way they hoped it was going to be portrayed. Yeah. And um, I says, is something weird. I says, this is before it come out. I went, this time next year, I'll own a 12-inch figure of your son. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I, only, I already own the costume and sent him a picture of me with the costume. <laughs> That's amazing. And I met Tom Holland at the um, after party of the premiere of Rocket Man. Um, I had a cameo in the film Rocket Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, another guy... Um, who I know was in the film. He said, do you like Spider-Man? I went, yeah. And when he stood behind you, I went, no. And he said, I said, do you like Spider-Man? He went, yeah. I went, come on, let's go talk to Spider-Man. And he, he talked to him. And I said, um, um, I says, um, I, I, my, I thought, I'll say, yeah. I went, do you know Celebrity Juices? He went, yeah. I said, oh, it's me from Celebrity Juices. <laughs> I said, I said so this is my mate, Tom. Oh, he's also called Tom. That's funny, isn't it? Um, I says, he was in the film as well. He's in the film more than I am. He's got a proper role. I had a little bit part in the film. Anyway, a big fan of Spider-Man. I thought you did a great job. I know your dad, actually. And, uh, yeah, we just wanted to come and say hello. And he's having a cigarette and he said, don't tell me dad I smoke. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. That's don't amazing. tell me dad I smoke. I went, I, I, don't worry, I won't tell him. <laughs> you know, your son, so, sorry, your Tommy's um, um, smoking. <laughs> Get on that phone straight away. Yeah, tapping away he was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a phrase, tabbing away. <laughs> but yeah, he was, he was smoking. Is that, is that don't an excuse for this podcast now? If I guess Sam Holland smokes! <laughs> Maybe he stopped. <laughs> Backtracking now. Yeah, he, he stopped to get fit to be Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me he don't smoke. I want Spider-Man, don't worry. <laughs> Your secret's safe with me. I'll tell everyone you're Spider-Man as well. <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man's in! Smoking! It's having outside. Yeah. Uh, lifting oh, his amazing. mask up because he's desperate for his <laughs> pussy to go back. <laughs> Never mind kissing Mary Jane. He wants to get a fag in his mouth. That's <laughs> amazing. Uh, yeah, your, your, next, your next film's very different to, uh, yeah, to, to the rest. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, that's what I mean. I have fads where I go all over the place. Um, Bram yeah. Stoker's Dracula. Um, when I saw Bram Stoker's Dracula, it must have been a very uh, a romantic point in my relationship with my missus because I just went, That's me and you. I love you like Dracula loves me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I don't want to bite you. And, uh, but I thought it was amazing. I've never seen anything like it. I can remember all the um, hype before it came out and hearing the music and. It was back when there was a TV show called Entertainment USA. Nice. Um, it used to be on, I remember the theme music, it went, ow! And I always used to think, is that Michael Jackson? And, um, <laughs> but they used to watch that program and they, they're talking about Bram Stoker's Dracula coming out and they had shop windows with all the um, costumes and stuff. And they've always been in love with Winona Ryder. And uh, but wow, went on a rider with Gary Oldman and Keanu Reeves and Anthony Hopkins. This is going to be amazing. Yeah, and, yeah. and when I watched it visually, I did think it was amazing. It was like um, a play. It looked like a play. Yeah. yeah. All the backdrops and everything. And you know when he's on the train, and you know it's a little model. Um, it was just like it was all done on purpose to look. Yeah. Like you would see a play, and I thought Gary Oldman looks super cool as Dracula. I've not never seen Dracula with long hair before. 
And um, I thought it was an amazing film, yeah. And Sadie Frost, young Sadie Frost in there as yes. um, Lucy. Yeah. And, and she looked terrifying, I think, as a vampire as well. Uh, but other than you get stuff like Twilight where they don't have fangs. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> it didn't make any sense. But yeah, Dracula, they, it kind of reinvented Dracula, but it had all the everything in there of Dracula that I wanted. Uh, you know, he turned into a werewolf, and again, he looked um, ace as a werewolf, and he turned into... I've never seen him turn into that, that bat creature before. I knew he yeah. turned into a bat, but a tiny little bat flying out. You just stand on him, wouldn't you? Why would <laughs> Dracula turn as something you can turn into something you could stand on? Yeah. You know, you know, he turns into a bat monster, and it made more sense. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant film. Love the music in it. Um, I don't know how many times I've watched Dracula, and I love watching the making of it. I love the intensity of Gary Oldman as he plays Dracula. Yeah. Uh, I love that he shaved the front of his hair off, yeah. um, for because he has got a, a he's, he's got a, well actually Dracula's probably got a hairline like me now, <laughs> like my massive um, Aunt McPartman forehead, and um, <laughs> I've got a massive forehead me, um, but yeah I just thought oh I want to look like Dracula, yeah. and um, I already had long hair then but I thought I'll make it go long I'll make me hair go longer. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I used to make a lot of films um, with my mates, and we made Ginger Dracula. And my then missus, who is still my missus now, um, she played Mina as well. Uh, but, you know, it was all a joke. And um, I can remember my mate playing Renfield, and we'd order a pizza at his house. And um, we had, we'd worked out to make this voice on the microphone, and we just... But the pizza guy was at the door, and we are going, Die, pizza man! <laughs> Die, pizza man. Which we all, we kept it all in the film. And at the end, when they killed Dracula in our film, we sang a Neil Diamond song that nobody ever seems to know, but it goes, Pocky pie pie, pocky pie pie, a double scoop, a tutti fruit, and maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, something about blue jeans. I can't remember what words. <laughs> uh, it was it's the weirdest Neil Diamond song, but we all sung that around a piano. And then, hooray, Dracula is dead. The bastard. <laughs> we also made Return of the Jedi as well and I can remember my mate who played Han Solo calling Jabba a fat bastard and I was going oh don't because people will complain about body shaming and um, also I won't be able to show it to my mum if you swear in it <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to do yeah, that again the... please don't call Jabba a fat bastard <laughs> that's the next film on your list as well isn't it Return of the Jedi Return of the Jedi, I saw Return of the Jedi, apparently, well, um, uh, my parents then said um, it was the hottest day of the year and I wanted to go to the cinema uh, back then. <laughs> and uh, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't settling until we said, you promised we were going to go see Return of the Jedi. And I was at the right age to appreciate Star Wars. I can't remember the age I was. But when I saw Star Wars, I think I might have been five. And we'd missed the beginning, but back then you could stay in and just watch it again. So we watched up to where we missed. And then I can remember being dragged out of the cinema. No, let's just watch it again. <laughs> no, we're up to here. And being dragged out of the cinema. And then, um, so, but when I saw Return, I can remember when I, again, when I was five, um, I was loving Star Wars, but get, I was maybe not into it as much, getting a bit yeah. bored maybe. But when I saw, Jedi I was at the perfect age, and I just thought, this is amazing. You've got action in space, you've got action in the sand, you've got action in the forest. And I know all Star Wars fans hated Ewoks, but I didn't. I thought they were Ewoks were <laughs> ace. And um, I loved all the monsters in it. I loved all the Jabba's Palace set up. Yeah. And um, I've since um, played Bib Fortuna in my sketch show. We did um, Bib Fortuna, I think it was called Bob Fortune, though. <laughs> and, it, and it was a spoof of the, the Undatables. Oh, and because yeah. I get, I guess he, it'd be pretty hard for him to get a date with that big <laughs> dick around his neck. And, um, but I think Bib Fortune is a wicked character. Have you yeah. seen uh, Mandalorian? Yes, amazing. Very good, very DC very right good. to the end after the credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Boba Can't Fett's wait. always been my favorite character as well. He's always been my favorite. Boba Fett. Yeah, Boba Fett. Yeah, is every. Well. My, my mate used to love Boba Fett so much, he stuck Boba Fett up his ass, this Star Wars figure. <laughs> what did you do that for? I went to see what it feels like. I went, all right, cool. Because <laughs> he's the right shape, I guess, for <laughs> something that's going to go in your ass. Boba Fett's helmet's the right shape. Yeah, that's the helmet helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you take his jetpack off. You would have to, and let's hope that he didn't have the one that fired the rocket thing out of it. <laughs> let's face it. He probably, he probably didn't because it was a super rare figure. Yeah. I don't even know if it was actually released, that figure, with the, the rocket thing. Or, I, don't, I don't know the ins and outs of that figure. I know it's worth a lot if you've got it. Oh, 
Um, but yeah, Return of the Jedi for me. And again, it's not Star Wars fans' favourite Star Wars, but it's a really easy watch. It's so pacey. It's really got a fast pace to it. And again, it's when um, Luke Skywalker becomes cool. He does yeah, become yeah, cool with his yeah. one glove on, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. And again, if you watch... I don't want to spoil anything for Mandalor people yeah. who haven't watched Mandalorian, but he's super cool, isn't he? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. That whole Although thing. in Mandalorian, he's got a Mega Drive face. <laughs> <laughs> he has got a bit of a Mega Drive face, hasn't he? I know, but yeah. We let him off, though. Yeah. Make up for it. I saw something on Instagram. Someone said um, how we made Luke Skywalker... Um, um, better than Disney did. I've seen that, did. yeah. And they did a pretty good job, didn't they? Yeah, it's really weird how that they could do it and Disney didn't do it that well. Really? <laughs> oh, but also, I was thought, if they have had Matt Hamill, but just not with the beard and just put a little bit more makeup on him, yeah. you would have just accepted, oh, it's yeah. Luke Skywalker from Jedi. You would have just accepted it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. ain't that... He ain't, he ain't like an old man, Matt Hamill, now, <laughs> is he? He's not like... <laughs> He's, not Larry King. He shaved his beard off and dyed his hair dark, or just put a, a, yeah. a, a darker wig on him to get rid of his greys. He, he, yeah. He'd pass for it, wouldn't he? He's not like walking around with a big beard gut or anything, is it? You know what I mean? You just go, no. right, Mark, you, you ready to come through? Just uh, breathe in, breathe in as you come through the door. <laughs> uh, yeah. He'd definitely be up for it as well. There's no way he's going to turn that down, is yeah. he? No. Oh, well, it, it was his, it's his voice, isn't it? Because it says, yeah, 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 it was, yeah, yeah. Barry Matt Hamill. Sure, yeah. Yeah. It, it, so I don't know why they did him with Mega Drive first. A lot of people were suggesting to use um, Sebastian Stan, the guy who plays Bucky Barnes in Winter Soldier and all that, because he right. looks like him when he was younger. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Suggesting him for it. Yeah, never thought of that. He does. Yeah. <laughs> but I would have just had Mark Hamill and just said, "Yeah, we'll dye your hair and um, just don't eat as much Nando's." <laughs> <laughs> we're not you saying you're fat but you just not got the physique that you had when you look Skywalker you've just got the physique of a man that looks well in his whatever age you are <laughs> what do you think of the uh, the newer Star Wars movies that we've done I thought they were great I, I love um, Rey Daisy, yeah. Daisy Ripley I think she's ace yeah. she's sort of embodiment of a female Luke Skywalker um, which is good to do a female Luke Skywalker I think I, I, spent, I obviously did it to get um, girls into it I guess yeah um, but it worked and I, I really enjoyed it yeah and I can remember seeing the second one uh, I'm not I'm not name dropping uh, I won't be able to say the name <laughs> I saw it with a certain person and they said didn't think it was very good I went hey you're one of the biggest Star Wars fans I know no I didn't think it was yeah. good it was for kids I went Star Wars is for kids <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. it just so happens that full grown men like it as well yeah but um yeah, you know, and they don't set out to make something you don't want to, they, they don't want you to enjoy. They do the best they can, don't they? Yeah. And then yeah. just to sit, sit there afterwards and go, shit, I don't think you should do that with any film. Just no, to go, no. shit, that. You know, they set out to make a film that hopefully everyone will enjoy. So it's just, you know, I've had a film out myself and critics said it was shit. <laughs> but um, we didn't set out to make a film. That, that was shit. And it, it some, it's, 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 it's got some nice qualities to keep them in the film. And some people <laughs> liked it. It made its money back. And, and some did quite well, actually, for a British movie. Um, but yeah, I hate when people, but it did make me think, oh, I'll never watch a film and go, shit that. Yeah. yeah I just go, I liked that bit, but I'm not yeah. mad keen on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand critics telling you what a shit film. It's a waste of time. It's just them. Um, and their egos go, look how good I am at writing. Look how good yeah. I am at slurring a film. Tell me what to go see then, you know? Yeah. It's a waste of me. It's a waste of my time watching how, reading how bad a film is. It's just negative. Don't write about it then. Write about a film that you like and you're uh, te telling me to go see, Yeah, I think. Saying some of shit is just pointless. Yeah. It's just best to say, oh, go see this, it's ace. Yeah. You know, we watched Wonder Woman. It's not the best film Ever, it's of the sh superhero genre, but it is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed watching it, and yeah. that's what I said about it when I, yeah. after I, I right, enjoyed that with a smile on my face. Good that <laughs> one. <wasn't it? laughs> I did. I did enjoy yeah. it. I think. With and the, one of my mates said it was too long. I went, oh, I enjoyed it. I could be as long as it wanted. It was. I felt right. Enjoyed it and funny. Yeah. With, with things like the new Wonder Woman film and the, the the newer Star Wars ones as well, I do think that the people who are watching it are saying it's shit. It's not really made for you. Like if when I watched the yeah. new Wonder Woman, I didn't. It's not as good as the, like the last one I thought. It's not made for me. It's made for girls growing up who want to get into it and stuff. I so guess. If, yeah. Say it's shit. It's not really for me. It's not. I'm not the target audience. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. But um, 
It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? I think. Exactly. I thought Wonder Woman was a bit. <laughs> yeah, the first one's a better film. The second yeah. one's a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah, fun. Exactly. And Wonder Woman looks amazing. I don't care what she's doing. If she was just taking bins out oh, for two hours, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I watched Gal Gadot all day on yeah. screen. Yeah. Doesn't matter what she's doing, yeah. If the next film, the plot line is she takes the bins out, she goes <laughs> to the supermarket and leaves a purse there. Yeah. And um, a bad guy steals it and she has to find her purse from the bad guy. Yeah. And the bad guy turns out to be Pierce Morgan. I'd still go watch it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. All in I'm costume. In, yeah. All yeah. in costume, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she does all of it. <laughs> I'm wearing normal clothes. Just wear me outfit, man. Wearing normal clothes. Why would you wear normal clothes if you've got a wicked suit like that? Yeah, you don't exactly. wear that all the time. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if Wonder Woman, in, in the world of Wonder Woman, does Wonder Woman see that as uh, as being Wonder Woman? Is that her job? What do you do for a living? I'm Wonder Woman. Is that her job? And is, is that her work attire? <laughs> Can she be Wonder Woman without that gear on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she got, oh, no, it's required uniform I have to wear it when I go to work. Yeah, she gets a uniform tax rebate as well. It's that her j- <laughs> job. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to buy some new red boots. I claim that tax. Lucy. Is that her job? I just Spider-Man, <laughs> in, uh, Spider-Man think, oh, I can't be bothered today. I'm on over. <laughs> well, it's weird, isn't it, that they, they put this big responsibility on superheroes that, uh, that they have to go fight crime. I'm going to a wedding. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't stop that bank from being robbed. Yeah. I've got a wedding to go to. <laughs> I guess that's supposed to be the whole idea of it, though, isn't it? The, the yeah. oh, good and bad, what should I do? Yeah. And they're dedicated to uh, making the world a better place. Yeah. But some of them might be tired. I liked Hancock. Remember Hancock? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, Will Smith, Smith one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one, I think. I'd, I'd like to see another Hancock film. Yeah, it's good fun. Take on that. Yeah. They set that up for a sequel as well, didn't they? They did, didn't they? Yeah, because he was yeah. like a proper superhero at the end. And yeah, but he rocked yeah. his um, costume from an X-Man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Full leather. Did, didn't he? Yeah. X-Men, you got Wolverine's costume on for? That's not yours. <laughs> that was one thing I uh, I missed about the Hugh Jackman. Now he's not doing Wolverine anymore. We never got to see him in the full the full yellow suit. He didn't him. do that, did he? No, he never did. In all the films he did, he never did that, unfortunately. Still well, he could have gone with a toned down version of it, couldn't you? Like mustard yeah. instead of yellow. <laughs> Subtle. Subtle. Subtle mustard and sort of dark brown leather. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Uh, next on your list. What was next on my it list? Is. It was um, E.T. Yeah. E.T., what a super classic. I, I, and I, I have a love affair with E.T. because I loved it so much when I was a kid. I was the exact same age as Henry Thomas, Elliot, um, when it came out. And I just thought, oh, well, I'm him then. Obviously, <laughs> I wanted to buy a red hoodie um, as soon as I'd seen the film. And I can remember it must have been around Christmas because I said to my mum, all I want for Christmas is E.T. things. But you couldn't buy many E.T. things at that time because the film had just come out. And yeah. again, the world of merchandise was just a different world yeah. back then. It, it wasn't like it is now where the toys have probably come out before the film. And that Christmas, I can remember getting a set of E.T. colouring books, which was made up of three books, a big one and two little ones. I got an E.T. badge um, and I got a, a hoodie um, that said E.T. on it um, on the chest. And I was disappointed that it said E.T. on it. And I thought, <laughs> Elliot's hoodie doesn't say E.T. on it. <laughs> I don't want it. It says E.T. on it. I don't want it to say E.T. on it. I just want the red hoodie. Imagine honest. if Elliot in the film <laughs> Such a twist. had E.T. written on his red hoodie. What, that, now that is going to fuck your brain, isn't it? <laughs> Hold on. So it's real E.T. and you've come to visit me. I've got, I've got, your, I've got your hoodie, man. Number one fan. <laughs> waiting for you. And obviously um, it kicked off the whole BMX thing for me, um, E.T. Like, I want a BMX. And I did BMX for years. Um, to this day, I still have four BMXs. <laughs> um, and I have a Kawara, like they used in the film. I have an E.T. Kawara with E.T. pads on it. <laughs> um, I have several ETs. I, I made an ET 20 years ago, and some people say to me, What's one of the best things you've made? You know, with me crafty stuff. I said, I've got an ET I made 20 years ago. I've still got it. It's all still in, in, in together. It's still got its arms and everything. And um, that's one of my favorite things I've ever made. Um, yeah, I, I love ET. And I can remember also when I was a little kid, I made some cardboard ET feet and I uh, pressed them into the mud in the forest. And I told my mates, <laughs> I went, Look at this. Just casually, hey, let's go down here. And then, <laughs> look at these. Look, 
Look at his alien prints. <laughs> and they're all like this. Oh my God. God. And then a year later, I said to him, remember when we went at Forest and we saw those fit footprints look like ETs? They went, yeah. I went, got a confession to make. Um, I did it. I, I made an ET footprint and put it in. They just went, yeah, we know you fucking prick. <laughs> <laughs> went, all right. What you thought we believed you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we just went along with you, you knobhead. All right. <laughs> so we're out on our bikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's awesome. And when they brought it out again and they CGI'd his face, I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I think, was it last year they did um, a BT ad, didn't they? Was it BT or was it Sky? Yeah. They, they, they did an ad where ET had come back and Henry Thomas was an adult. Oh, oh really? They did do an ad of it. And I just thought, oh, I did this as a sketch. But ET caught <laughs> Elliot. And, um... But again, they, di they didn't use the original puppet. And I think the E.T. puppet looks amazing. It, it still yeah. looks yeah. real, I think. Yeah. Uh, I can remember the little, the, they used um, a, a kid with no legs inside him. Yes. And they used a little, a little person as well. And that little person, I can remember watching the news and that little person had died. And I must have been off school for some reason, ill. And, um, and I, I, being, I can remember being upset that the little man had died in E.T. <laughs> oh, no. But in my mind, I just thought, they'll never make another E.T. now yeah. because that man died. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, it's just a lovely film, isn't it? It's lovely. And also, yeah. so when you, the first time you see E.T. when you're a kid, it's a pretty scary thing to look at. as well. You're like, oh, what the fuck is he? Because <laughs> I don't like frogs. And <laughs> very frog-like in his shiny skin. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 um, even with my kids now, I go, I say it when we go, but ET stinks. He looks like a stink. <laughs> don't they? He stinks yeah. worse than I imagine um, Roseanne's house to smell. Because <laughs> Roseanne's house looks like it stinks. <laughs> the ET looks like yeah. he stinks. Yeah. <laughs> Rose yeah, it's a great film. Like it tabs and chip fat. And uh, you'd always have to wash your hands after touching him. <laughs> <laughs> have his he's, he's got residue on me, man. He's, he's wet. Yeah. He's wet. <laughs> but it's a great puppet. And it's the same guy that did the King Kong. Um, forgotten the forgotten the name of the guy who did the prop. Um, but he did the 70s King Kong with Jeff Bridges in. Yeah. Um, he, he, he did King Kong and E.T. Amongst other films, I guess. Oh, man, is it? But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's not right, isn't it? Yeah, I did. Keep my, <laughs> keep, 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 keep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have you seen the trailer for um, Godzilla vs. King Kong? Yes, I have. And I just, uh, yesterday I watched uh, Godzilla King, King of Monsters, Monsters, the second one. So what, you watched. only yesterday? Only yesterday. I watched the first, I've seen the first one, and then only yesterday I watched the second, because I've seen the trailer. I was like, I'm going to have to watch that before it's come. Oh, but you didn't watch it when it came out? No, no, no. I only oh. watched it yesterday. The first time I watched it, yeah. Well, I went to the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Godzilla having a tab? Don't yeah, he was having that. a tab. <laughs> Wimily Bobby Brown. No, I haven't seen her smoking. No, I haven't seen her smoking. <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown's a lovely girl. Yeah. Yeah, but I've never seen her smoking. <laughs> never under bud. Yeah. Uh, your, uh, your, ne your next film, we, we actually made you a pair of shoes yeah. for this theme. Yeah, you did. Oh, boys. Yeah, I, yeah, I was showing my mate them yesterday via Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I thought this was going to be higher on your list to be honest I thought this would have been one of the I'm saying it's difficult it's so difficult isn't it yeah. because I have fads where I'm just obsessed with that film yeah. and no other film means anything and I, I watch Lost Boys like having the radio on just put it on yes yeah. Yeah. don't watch it just have it on um, I was at the I was a fifth. I was fifteen when watching a fifteen I think it might have been one of my <laughs> first fifteens I ever saw yeah. without sneaking in and I, afterwards I obviously, I wanted to be a lost boy, but I didn't want to be a vampire, but I wanted to look like one. And I can remember going shopping in Manchester and just looking for a long trench coat because I just wanted to look like that. <laughs> and uh, everything about it was cool. It had my favourite band in it twice, in excess. Um, so that was good. That meant I was going to buy the soundtrack. All, even though back then, all I did is buy soundtracks. <laughs> my, I've still got my record collection and there's a lot of soundtracks in there. Yeah. You go, why did you buy... That, why did you buy Woman in Red? So it was a soundtrack, wasn't it? So I bought it. <laughs> and, um, it's a great soundtrack, actually, Woman in Red. It's a lot of Stevie Wonder. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, what sleep all day, party all night. It's fun to be a vampire in it, and it is, but it's fun. <laughs> and then I, me and Paddy did, I always wanted to do Lost Boys when we did Picture Show, 
Yeah. But the, the channel said it's not a big enough film. And I went, but you can buy an action figure and a T-shirt of that film. And it came out in 1987. You yeah. can still buy merchandise now. It's yeah. not a big enough film. I said, you're wrong. And they're making a TV series out of it, Lost Boys, I heard. Are they? I they think Warner Brothers are making it. Have you seen the sequel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got it's got the it's got that it's got the Lost Boys in the title, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've only seen it once though, yeah. I imagine. It's got Corey Feldman in it. Yes, yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back to the original. Yeah, um it's just, <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? Um love it. <laughs> um yeah so me and paddy did um movie fest where we were hosting outdoor cinema a lot of people going what is movie fest I went, it's just an evening of outdoor cinema hosted by me and paddy yeah but i don't get it what is it oh it's just an evening of outdoor cinema hosted by me and we're hosting outdoor cinema what do you not fucking get <laughs> hello welcome to the movie fest tonight we're showing lost boys outdoor cinema anyway, it, did, it was halloween ish and we did lost boys um, and we got a message from Kiefer Sutherland saying good luck and stuff. Oh, and then once I was at Sowell House and um, it was their birthday, the, the first year um, at White City. And I went there and um, Kiefer Sutherland was going to be performing. And they said, do you want to introduce me on stage? I went, I do, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, God, this is like a dream. What, an accident. I was there. I didn't know it was their first yeah. year of being in White City, Sowell House. And I'm there at the right time. And, I'm, and so I'm on stage and I'm bigging up Kiefer Sutherland before I come. I can, out corner of my eye, I can see him. And, um, <laughs> and I'm a bit drunk also. <laughs> um, and I'm saying, I'm about to welcome on stage a man who's in one of my favourite films. You must, And um, I imagine he just looks at women and they come in their pants. And I'm saying <laughs> all this business. <laughs> I says he's a proper man. He's the kind of guy I imagine when he makes love to a woman, he keeps in until it's fallen out and it's gone all wet and cold. <laughs> he is a proper man. He's a man's man. He's <laughs> one of my favourite men. Um, um, and then the audience just blank faces. And I'm just thinking, I'm because I'm talking about all these films he's been in. I'm seeing all their blank faces because they're. 21 and whatever age <laughs> and they didn't have a clue what i was talking about and when i got off stage just stood next to this girl she went oh is this old fella who <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this old fella on stage because you know he does music as well uh, <laughs> he's with his band and uh, i said oh, i don't matter don't matter and i couldn't believe it and i'm just thinking it's david from lost Do you know lost yeah. boys no <laughs> But it's yes, and everything about it's cool. The imagery works on t-shirts, on yeah. shoes. <laughs> um, every time I sort of want to paint someone on a leather jacket, I, just, I think I'll just paint. Oh, I've already done Lost Boys on a leather jacket. Yeah. But it's just the imagery of every, everything about that film is amazing. If they did it again, um, not you wouldn't have to make it again, but just put new bits in it. It'd be great to see them in the sky, wouldn't it? I think. Yeah. Great because you never see them because of budget reasons, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I met a, few, a couple of the Lost Boys because I, I went to a, a horror convention in Manchester for the love of horror. Yeah. And uh, they built like a backdrop of the cave and got my photograph taken with all the Lost Boys that are still alive. And I also met, met um, Tim Capello, you know, uh, I still believe guy. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, a little, I think last, when, last year he sent me a message saying, um, hopefully we'll get to meet again uh, for the love of horror. And I thought, we won't do. We won't because <laughs> lockdown's going on all year, my friend. Yeah. And um, But yeah, I do. I, lo I love that film. And it, 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 it takes me back to when I was 15. And um, you can watch it again and again. It's just so cool. You, I guess you didn't need to see them flying in the air, did you? You could imagine <laughs> flying in the air. The cave that they live in. Um, they had little weird bat feet and stuff. I'd never seen that before. Super cool. And um, I've met Corey... Um, Feldman a couple of times. He's, he's an interesting character. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, but yeah, Lost Boys, fantastic film. Love it. You Everyone had that soundtrack when I was a kid. Everyone had that soundtrack. Yeah. It was a big yeah. soundtrack, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very, very popular. Yeah. 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 So you've obviously like you're talking about them with Corey Feldman and Keith Sutherland and that, and uh, I've I've like heard interviews with you, and you say you've been friends with Zach Gallagher and uh, Mark Arnold at a team of. Yeah. 
is there one of these like films in an actor you've yet to meet who you want to add to your collection of team friends? Well, I guess it would have been nice to meet Michael J. Fox, but I'd be a bit nervous meeting him, yeah. you know, um, because, uh, you know, he's not very well. Yeah. And, and um, it won't be like my, it won't be like meeting Martin McFly, I guess. <laughs> no, no. no. Um, I, I don't, I, I, guess, I guess it'd be quite upsetting to meet Michael J. Fox, you know, when you're oh, yeah, in your mind, yeah, you have you mean, yeah. Martin yeah. McFly or Scott Howard in your head. Uh, yeah. And he's got this horrible illness. It, it might be quite upsetting, and I don't, I don't know how I'd react. You know, yeah, true. He, he was nearly going to be in the Back to the Future tribute we did, which is on my YouTube channel, Keith Lemons Doings, which I'm on with a plugger. Um, <laughs> he was nearly going to be in it, but I think then he's missed because our producer saw him in a hotel, and I think he was up for doing it, and then his missus um, pulled him away, and he said, "Oh, sorry, I've got to go," oh, right. and um, so he wasn't in it. But I said, "I said I ain't bothered about meeting him," no, because I, I don't know if I'll get upset. Yeah, and also, I, again, I don't, I don't, I'm not. I don't know what was the right thing to say. When I first met Gareth Gates, I caught his stutter <laughs> just talking to him. So, um, I wouldn't any, want anyone to think I was taking the piss because I want I'd be upset. But I do, it's a, maybe it's a sympathy thing that happens. You know, it's like when my mum's ill and she's got a cough, I suddenly get a cough. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. <laughs> That could be really awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. But I, I guess it'd be upsetting as well, mostly. Uh, yeah. What I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out, of the, out of the people you have met, who, who's like the top of the list for you? Well, I, I was very starstruck when I met Zach Galligan, which means nothing to loads of people. Um, <laughs> but to a Gremlins fan, you're meeting the Don, you know, you're meeting the Gremlins man. And um, he was doing a, a, he was hosting Gremlins at the Prince Charles Cinema in Leicester Square. He, he did it for two years on the trot. And um, I went the first year and I took my little action figure of him and I'm asking him to sign it and he's signing it. And my missus is looking at me like, you knob. Because <laughs> I'm all, all, all a little bit... <laughs> I got a bit on it. And um, I said, are you working at the moment? He says, yeah, well, I'm working now, aren't I? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I said, um, I do a TV show and uh, it'd be great to have it open it. And jump, <laughs> and the missus just went, just sit down. And then he went, I'll speak to you after. And I was too embarrassed to speak to him after. And then um, I think it was my birthday episode on Celebrity Juice. And I went, please book Zach Galligan. <laughs> and he was in the country. So they booked him. And he was, I think we had Billy Ocean, Zach Galligan. <laughs> just on my ear. Oh, yeah. It was an 80s special. And you know what? It was right nice. And I got on with him really well. Yeah. And we had drinks and stuff. And then he was in my sketch show. And then the following year, I went to see him again. And so when he comes over, I meet up with him. Yeah. Nice. And it's weird. And Jill always says, isn't it weird that you're friends with Zach Gallagher? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, but he's, a, you know, he's a nice guy. And uh, he probably gets bored of me asking him about Gremlin <laughs> stuff. As does Mark Arnold. I met Mark Arnold at a screening of Team Wolf in Camden, an outdoor theatre yeah. cinema thing we were doing in summer. And I'm walking past him and he went, hey, hey hi. I went, shit, he knows who I am. <laughs> and I said, oh, I can't tell you what it means to meet you. And I'm a big fan of Team Wolf and stuff. Uh, and then again, got him in the sketch show when we did a Team Wolf spoof. And um, became mates with him. But, like, he's like his mate. And it's, so it's, it's weird. It's weird because I do watch yeah. these films quite often. Uh, and, um, I, I do talk about them quite often to these people. And, oh, <laughs> don't fucking just ask me any more questions about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can you just sign this? I thought we'd just go around for a drink. Yeah, we're going to have a drink, but just sign that figure. <laughs> I got Zach Galligan to sign lots of me gremlin toys. <laughs> yeah, for, for a year I was cutting the grass to pay for payments for this camera. And then they slabbed the garden, paved it all. <laughs> <laughs> but I made gremlin, I can remember I was 16 and my mates were like, oh, we're going to go get pissed at the park. He come and I went, no, I've got to make some gremlins for this. Because we're going to make gremlins. You all said you were going to be in it. And uh, so whilst my mates were all getting pissed at the park and feeling tits, I was at home making gremlin puppets. <laughs> And then I went to the park and felt it. <laughs> <laughs> Best of both worlds. Uh, I, I love that that time in my life, um, just feeling boobs because um, you were never going to get any sexual um, transmitted diseases or get anyone pregnant. I could have felt boobs <laughs> for days. And I can remember I, I was with then girlfriend and um, 
looking at her, I could say, oh, she's bored of me feeling her boobs, but I aren't going any further. I like it here. I was going, <laughs> until she goes, get off me boobs. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a little puppy dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do anything else. That's just the boobs. It's the safest way these days. This is, yeah. Yeah. Even though, as I guess, I was old enough to um, have um, legal sexual intercourse, but I was just happy having boobs. <laughs> <laughs> but how have I got onto boobs from t from t Gremlins? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I made my own version of Gremlins when I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I love I love Gremlins. Uh, it's, it's like a, a weird fairy tale, I think. And it's my yeah. favourite Christmas movie. And some people go, eh, Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's set at Christmas. For Christmas, he gets Gizmo. Gizmo's got a little Christmas hat on. There's Christmas decorations. Santa Claus gets murdered by some gremlins. <laughs> it's Christmas. It's, it's more, more of a Christmas film than Die Hard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though... Well, well act, <laughs> actually, Christmas First Blood done. is... Rambo First Blood is set at Christmas. You can see Christmas decorations oh, in the background. Yeah, in the police station, the police station, and that. Is that yeah, he don't, he don't mention it. They don't say it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> it they don't, no yeah. one says Merry Christmas, Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> no one says imagine Merry Christmas, Rambo. Merry Christmas, you. Yeah, Kremlin's um, so, this. So I know we're talking about obviously you know like the celebrities and stuff like that from these films. Obviously, yourself would. I don't know if you call yourself a geek, but obviously, you're into the sort of culture and things like that. Geek chic. I'm uber geek. In Beyond. <laughs> I often uh, bring people to my house and go, Yeah, let me show you some of my stuff and let's see yeah. if we're still friends afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any celebrities that you know that you wouldn't at first think, Oh, they're a geek, but then, like, obviously, they've got collectibles and stuff like that? Well, um, Jonathan Ross is a massive geek. Yeah, he's into comics, he collects mostly obviously. Japanese robot stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gino collects like, hot toys oh, really? and, and, and Japanese robot stuff. Um, Paddy's got a few hot toys. He likes stuff, not as much as I do, but he's got, he's got a little collection going. Um, who else do I know? I can't think. It, it's surprising. You... It's surprising. Yeah. You know? Are you into the comics? Um, well? Do you know Andy Goldstein? Oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's he's got a lot of Star Wars stuff, oh, yeah. that, but that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have anything until he met me, and then every <laughs> time he come around my house, he said, "I've got to leave, and I've spent two hundred quid." Because I'm going, "Hey, look at this! You should buy one. <laughs> Get one of these." <laughs> yeah. Uh, next on your list, uh, your number two. two. Number two. Team off. You always want it to be special, but you never expected this. You never expect to be a teenage werewolf, do you? You never <laughs> expect it. What a fantastic film, even though many people think it's rubbish. I saw it, uh, the age I saw it at again, I connected with it. I thought this is an analogy for pubism, um, but it's even better. He's a werewolf. Um, if, if you become a werewolf, you become very good at basketball and you can dance on cars. <laughs> but, Lots of perks, and also you become popular, and you get the fit girl, Pamela uh, Baggy Knickers. Uh, you get off with her. Remember her Baggy Knickers? She had the Baggy Knickers. <laughs> she did. <Yeah. laughs> Why has she got Baggy Knickers? I didn't thought <laughs> girls had like tight knickers, but she's got Baggy Knickers. <laughs> and um, she was super fit. She um, reminds me of Patsy Kensit. Also, I was in love with Patsy Kensit back then. And that's so weird. I'm friends with her as well. <laughs> <laughs> She used to be all over me wall. Um, I just collect people from the past as friends. Um, yeah, T Team Wolf was fantastic. And it was the biggest trouble I ever got into uh, from my parents. Um, I want, I, my mates went to see Team Wolf. I'd already seen it twice. So it would have been the third time. And I wasn't allowed to go see it. And I had an argument, got sent to my bedroom. And I climbed out of the window and went to see it anyway. And then when I got home, I got into so much trouble. And they were just trying to teach me the value of money, saying that I'd worst <laughs> wasted me money um, seeing a film I'd already seen. I went, I went to a local one. It was 75p. <laughs> yeah, 75p. I got cinema. And um, yeah, I've dressed as Team Wolf many times uh, on telly, off telly, and I own um, the actual costume that he wears when he's playing yeah. basketball. I think, I don't know if there's two or three costumes made. Uh, but I've got one of them that my missus bought me for a special birthday. And um, I also own his jacket that he's wearing when he's dancing on top of the van. 
and a, and a, a shirt and a crew T-shirt. Nice. Um, that I bought off the production manager of Team Wolf. Um, he wanted a lot of money for it, and I have a price cut off where I don't pay anything more than that for anything in the world. <laughs> and um, I, I, I offered that. This was on eBay. And then he'd researched me, this guy, and said, oh, you're a big Team Wolf fan, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, and gave me it for the price that I offered oh, and said, I know you'll look after it. And um, oh, get, gave me it with this certificate of authenticity. And um, when um, uh, Mark Arnold came around to me, I said, here, look at this. <laughs> and he's, he's just staring at it. He's like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and he's got um, an original um, varsity jacket from Team Wolf, but yeah. it's red and yellow. Because they were okay. going to be red and yellow, then they changed it to blue and yellow. Oh. Hence, on the poster of Team Wolf, he's got a red and yellow jacket. And again, oh. as a kid, I kept thinking, why is it the wrong colour? Why is it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> he's got blue and yellow. He's got blue and yellow. And I didn't know that varsity um, jacket knowledge until I met Mark Arnold. So all my life, um, I love because I love that poster. Again, it's another imagery like um, Lost Boys. It's just an image that I love. But I always thought, why did they paint it red? Yeah. And he's got some numbers there also on his varsity jacket on the shoulder. <laughs> I don't have those. No. He's got a blue jacket with a B on for beavers. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, at that age, yeah. beavers. <laughs> 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 when uh, the age that Team Wolf came out, yeah. beavers. <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny yeah, now. It is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and... Um, yeah, I often put me team off. Um, so the guy who did the make makeup and props and stuff for um, Labyrinth, he made me a team off mask, um, oh, which I, I often put on in the house and just walk around at home. <laughs> yeah, you found the sequel of, of Team Wolf as well. It's got Jason Bateman in it. Jason Bateman. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, he's got his dad who was a middle-aged pimp, um, guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> Team Wolf turns into a wolf, and his dad turns into a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I come, I, 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 I watched it. Um, I was on a school trip actually when I watched Team Wolf Two. On a residential trip, we went to Robin Hood's Bay, and he took us all out to the cinema, and we went to see Team Wolf Two. And after that, I wanted a uh, Levi denim jacket with the fur inside. And I have one, uh, but I only wanted one because he had one. I liked that jacket in the film, and I liked it when it said Team Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> not as good as Team Wolf. No, it's not. No, not so. It's not as good. Yeah. As, not again, but it's the age I was at. I was at the right age, and um, I was excited for it. But again, it didn't have Michael J. Fox in it, and I wish it did. But yeah, apparently, Michael J. Fox was a bit ashamed of Team Wolf. He turned it down, apparently, didn't he, this yeah. sequel, yeah. But wanting to Team Wolf, he was doing Team Wolf, and Robert Zemeckis and um, Spielberg were recce in the street um, that they were filming Team Wolf on for Back to the Future. It's the same street, and um, he was like all embarrassed with his Team Wolf makeup on, <laughs> and um, like oh, I want to be with those guys. Um, <laughs> but when I went to that street when we did um, Back to the Future tribute, this the neighbours was telling us that the the production company that made Team Wolf were much nicer than the production company. <laughs> I went because they had less money. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> They'd yeah. Last year. And, he, and he showed me a photograph of them with Michael J. Fox. And I went, have you got a picture of you with Marty McFly? And they went, yeah, we have. And they showed me a photograph and I looked at it and I went, that's not Marty McFly, that's Scott Howard. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had the clothes on that he had on when yeah. he's Team Wolf. He didn't have Marty <laughs> McFly clothes on. I went, oh, well, we do remember the Team Wolf guys being really friendly, a lot friendlier than the Back to the Future guys. <laughs> Uh, we didn't put that in the documentary because no. um, Bob Gale is a very, very nice man. And uh, he's been very nice to me since we did the Back to the Future tribute. And uh, yeah. invited me to see the musical Back to the Future the musical. I had a drink with him afterwards. He's an oh, nice. extremely lovely guy. Yeah. And uh, I do have emails with him um, quite a lot, often. And at last email he told me, he says, um, they brought, there's um, a visual encyclopedia of Back to the Future and they brought another version, an updated version of it out. And I, I've got a little mention in it as well. Oh, yeah, nice. that's class. Uh, and, and there's a guy called Paul Davis that writes a lot of horror books and does a lot of directing. He did a, a, a making of book of The Lost Boys. And I've got a photograph and a para, and a chunk in, in that book. 
Um, and me just talking about when I went to see Lost Boys yeah. when I was a kid and what what the experience was like. Uh, it's a great book. I think it's quite, quite expensive to buy now. I saw it on um, eBay for about 50 quid. Um, but if you can find it cheaper, I recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Not that it's not worth 50 quid. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fantastic book. It's got loads of behind the scenes photographs and stuff. I wish they'd have brought more merchandise out of Team Wolf. Because they, they brought nothing out. And um, no. of course, now you can get the little reaction figures, which aren't brilliant figures, but they're a nice idea. Do you know the little reaction figures? No. Um, they look a little bit like old Star Wars figures, you know, yeah. on the card with the little yeah. bubble. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and how old Star Wars figures are quite basic, aren't they, compared to yeah. new ones? Yeah. Um, so the basic figures, but they do all, all sorts of figures. And they did some team up ones. Um, and they've recently brought out t-shirt stuff, but they didn't do a lot of merchandise. I I'd love to see a Hot Toys figure of Team Wolf. Yeah. Uh, I know Hot... Um, do you know um, Blitzway? They make figures as well. Right. They yeah, just yeah. did some um, Bill and Ted figures, which are amazing. I've got them, actually. They're on my shelf up here. I'm not going to get them because... I'll pull everything down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but check out my Instagram account. I think I've done a short video and I've done a review of them, that yeah. which will be on my YouTube channel, Keith Lemons Doings. Yeah, so I've seen one uh, you posted uh, not long ago, uh, the Pennywise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a review yeah. of that as well. Yeah. Actually, on that video, when that goes out on YouTube, I do a review of some Planet of the Apes reaction figures. Nice. Really basic figures, but they're just nice things to put on the wall. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, as figures, they're not very good. But you get it's the nice ideas. They do Pulp Fiction. I've got a taxi driver. I've got, um, you know, the Breakdance movie, which became Breaking rather than break dance. They took the word dance because as <laughs> life's gone on, we, we're too busy to say words. <laughs> so let's take out the word dance and just call it breaking. So it became, instead of break dance, it got, they changed it to break dance. Right. And they do figures for that. Um, odd, odd films, you know, which we think would never, I think Back to the Future and Gremlins, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, you never think we'd do Taxi Driver and Pulp Fiction, but they did. Yeah. Um, and Big Trouble in Little China, loads of stuff like that. Movies, We're geeking yeah. out to the max here, aren't we? Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Might as well just stick my fingers up my ass. Sick up and lick it up. <laughs> Christ. I've never had such um, open geekness. That's what it's about. <laughs> Get a gizmo and just shove up my ass. <laughs> Getting sucked off by Audrey too. <laughs> I've never geeked out so much in my life. <laughs> I don't believe that, Keith. No. <laughs> by myself, I have. Yeah. yeah. You're doing an 80s sort of movie theme um, this month on your channel, aren't you? Yeah, so it's an idea I had called Movie Craft, and I thought I would re review old films because Amanda Holden said, can you uh, message me? I'm name dropping again. She said, um, <laughs> can you give me 10 films to watch? I went, yeah. And I reviewed them dressed as Big Fortuna <laughs> and sent her a video. <laughs> but there you go. And um, I just thought, you know, oh, let's look at old films. In the times where cinema's not happening right now, which is terrible. Yeah. Um, a lot of people go, want to go, what old films shall I watch that I love, uh, that I've forgotten about? So I thought I'll review old films and then make something from that film and also visit people that also make things like I do and talk to people that are in those films that I used yeah. to love, Zach Galligan and anyone I can get my hands on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've made a little teaser, um, which I will send to telly channels. Um, but it, it's all sort of virtual chats at the moment it, it when covid disappears i would go visit yeah. them and stuff and visit a guy that makes a proton pack and stuff and um, so i've done this idea but i just thought i oh, will do a smaller version of it on youtube um but i mean I, it, the pace of it that i've got on youtube is way too long the review of the film it'd have to be crunched right. down for telly yeah uh, and um because i remember when i didn't want to do a, a youtube channel and my agent was saying, oh, Philip Schofield's got a YouTube channel. He ended up getting a TV show out of what he does when he was reviewing gadgets and stuff. Because he, he yeah. does a thing at Christmas where he reviews gadgets and stuff to buy. Oh. And I just thought, oh, well, I'll do the movie craft thing um, on YouTube. And ho hopefully it'll become a proper show. Yeah. You know, or, or it will. And hopefully get sponsors so we can make it as a proper show. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to just film me making stuff. I want to talk to other people that can make stuff better than I can. Like um, like R two D twos and stuff. I have made a life size R two D two, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it just stands there, and sometimes his yeah. foot falls off. I'm fucking. Fucked. <laughs> um, so you're, uh, what you're, you're number one film. 
My number one film is Back oh, to Future, if you're from Leeds or if you're posh. <laughs> back to, to the Future. Um, I went to see Back to the Future when I was a kid with my mum. We went to see Santa Claus, the movie. It was sold out. So she went, let's see that future film. It's got skateboards in it. You like skateboards. Okay. And it changed my life. Really? And um, yeah, I loved it and became a big skateboarder, more so because of Marty McFly and often... Yeah. Rode a skateboard on the back of a car and getting into trouble by police when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, and um, loved back, obviously wanted an orange orange body warmer, or again, if you're posh, Gile. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're American, um, a, a down goose puffy vest. They call them vests. And I'm, like, I'm not a vest. And um, loved Back to the Future. As a film, it's a perfectly made film with nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, Families can watch. Everyone can watch it. It's amazing. Michael J. Fox at his best. Um, Back to the Future 2. Exciting. Still not as good as the first one for me. Back to the Future 3. Has Michael J. Fox in it. <laughs> got Doc Brown. It's got, it's got loads of people in it. Yeah, big train. He's got, train in. He's got a train in it. But Back to the Future is yeah. amazing. I don't know how many times I've seen it. We did an hour's tribute to it, which was for ITV2, which I'd been chatting about for years. And I can remember being in a meeting about something else. And then producer go, after this meeting, can you come and see me about this? So what's it about? They went, that Back to the Future show you want to do? I went, are we doing it? Went, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And we, so we, we managed to do it because we tied it in um, budget-wise with um, Fruit Keel. We were in LA doing Fruit yeah. Keel, so it meant we could go see the locations of Back to the Future at the same time, nice. and that's how we got to do it. And I can remember my missus phoning me when I was outside Doc Brown's house. She went, where are you? And I started crying. And I went, I'm outside Doc Brown's house. Because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I couldn't believe it was my job to do that show. Yeah, and I thought I'd love to do another show like this, uh, and I think I mentioned it, but they cut it out because when we were on the same street where they filmed Team Wolf, obviously the story I told you about um, the couple had a photograph with Michael J. Fox, and I said that's Scott Howard, not Marty McFly. Yeah. I went into a big thing about Team Wolf and talked about Team Wolf, and, dire- and producer went, "Oh, we can't. Are you supposed to be Back to the Future, not Team Wolf." <laughs> but it's, it's funny that I fire off, isn't it? He went, "Is it?" Yeah. <laughs> And um, we didn't use any Team Wolf talk, but I, I think I do mention, go, I think uh, in it that uh, the next one I'll do is Team Wolf that won't be as popular. And then <laughs> um, we pitched it last year to ITV2, me doing the same thing with Team Wolf, but going on a road trip with Mark Arnold, Mick, the bad guy from yeah. Team Wolf, going on a road trip with him and him taking us to the school where they did the basketball and little locations. And he's yeah. still friends with some of the cast. So meet up with them and stuff. And they were all for it. And I said, well, we're going to sell it as the special that nobody wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they, they were laughing at it and said, um, well, if we get the rights for Team Wolf, we could show Team Wolf and just big it up to a bigger thing and call it Team Wolf Night. I went, exactly. I said, it, I said but it won't do as well as Back to the Future because yeah. it's not as popular. I said, there's a lot of love for Team Wolf, but it's not as popular and it's not a special day, 2015. The date yeah. when you went into the future, um, October yeah. 26, was it? Um, we had, we aired it on that on that day. And so it was Back to the Future, the day on ITV2. Right. It was a special event where there's no relevant days, really, for Team Wolf. <laughs> and uh, we could lie and go, this is the night where he actually turned into <laughs> Team Wolf. <laughs> so, so again, not a big deal. Um but yeah, we were planning to do a Team Wolf one. I don't know whether we, we will. I don't know. Who, who knows, COVID-wise. Yeah. But Back to the Future, is, you know, you can watch it a million times and, and still love it. It's, what a wicked film. It's an amazing it's, film. It is a fantastic film. Yeah. And the musical was supposed to come out in London in May. Luckily, I got to see the musical. I, got, I, I saw a workshop of it. Bob Gale invited me to a workshop. He says, you're the biggest Back to the Future fan I know, and I want you to watch it to tell us that we're doing the right thing. <laughs> and me yeah, afterwards, yeah, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> As if I was going to go, well, it was called Back to the Future, wasn't it? Yeah, you got my approval. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess. No, but the, 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 in the workshop that I saw, the car was played by a girl in a sil- silver jacket. And it was still amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd got the car box? played by a girl. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> was it? And That's it amazing. still blew my mind. 
<laughs> and then luckily I got to see it in Manchester before COVID happened. Oh. Uh, and then I said, how come you're not doing it in London? Uh, this is finger crossed we are. And then they announced that it's going to be in May this year. Britain, is it? Uh, I don't think it is. Nah. I don't. Not, not, not unless Superman <laughs> turns up and goes around the world backwards. <laughs> and turns everything backwards. And then when he stops, we go... Yeah. Why didn't you do that ages ago? Why do, you bother, <laughs> why do you bother with any of your powers if you can just make anything go backwards by spinning around the world backwards? And how come you haven't got a bit of sick there? <laughs> <laughs> um, but if the time when it does come back to London, you've got to, if you are in the London vicinity, you've got to go see Back to the Future the musical. It's incredible. Yes, definitely. And all the actors yeah. are brilliant as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things we wanted to do on this podcast is obviously when the guest comes on and talks about their top 10 we've got uh, 10 questions one question about each of your films in the top 10 so we yeah. can have a sort of leaderboard so as okay. a first guest you're automatically going to be the highest scorer so it's not that much pressure but yeah. still a bit of top hand bottom so yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, are you happy to do the question yeah yeah Roger so I'm expecting a high score if yeah you, I'm expecting a big score <laughs> I have got I COVID f- brain. Like, I haven't spoken <laughs> for ages. So I don't know. Yeah. 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 So, the first question is uh, what was the license plate on the DeLorean? Out of time? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> one. Easy one. Yeah. Like, right. I've got several of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Team One. And in the future oh, one, it's just like silver lines, like a barcode. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. give you out of time, it's fine. But there's a bonus <laughs> point for that one. <laughs> so in Team Wolf, Coach Finstock gives him three rules that he lives by. Can you give me oh, one of those rules? Never get less than eight hours sleep, is it? Seven hours? Twelve. Twelve, That's Twelve hours show. sleep. That's close. Um, never sleep with a woman with a tattoo of a dagger on her back, I think. Correct, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm trying to picture it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't remember. Oh, you only need one season yeah. anyway. Yeah, never play cards with a guy who has the same Bobby. first name as the city. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. giving you that one, definitely. Yeah. Though. yeah. Uh, question three. How much did Billy's father pay for Gizmo? Um, is it $200? $200, yeah. yeah. Uh, who was the first Lost Boys? Which you would, wouldn't you? That's not a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course it's more than that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, who was the first Lost Boy to die? Uh, Marco. Storming it already, yeah. yeah. Uh, what sweets does Elliot use to lure ET? Breeze pieces. <laughs> what is the name of Because Jack- when you were a kid, you thought they were smarties. <laughs> or skittles. Because we didn't have Reese pieces. No. What's the name of Jabba's pet? Celius Crumb. Too easy. Huh? This is, this is yeah. not a bad start at all. <laughs> uh, who directed Bram Stoker's Dracula? Um... Francis Ford Coppola. What part-time job does Peter Parker have in Spider-Man 2? He's a photographer, isn't he? And he does rides for pizzas. Pe- the pizza yeah, delivery yeah. man. <laughs> nice. uh, in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, what make of car do they take out for the day? Ferrari. Yep. Last one. This is for the full mouse here. What type of gun does Napoleon claim he was using in Alaska when hunting Wolverines? Oh, uh, some gauge. Um, <laughs> it helps if you do the impression as well. Yeah, fucking twelve gauge. Yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ten out of ten. Jesus, what a mate. Fucking twelve gauge. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Be the voice. Have yeah, you seen the cartoon cool. of Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah, it's good. I, yeah. I really liked that. I thought it worked really well as a cartoon. Yeah, I thought it worked really well. It said Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's enough for me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we like it. I do, yeah. Uh, well, uh, as part of the podcast, oh, we yeah. sent you two shoes as well, Keith. T- two shoes. So we pick. Uh... So we've been giving each other a lot of stick because obviously the competition is <laughs> who's best. And I've been giving it big licks. Yep. So you have to. I'm not going to tell you who's done what. No. Yeah, 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 we, we won't tell you who's done who's. But Rob did message me the day before we sent them saying, you might as well not bother Nick because my. But it, it, I mean, it don't, it, don't, it don't matter if you told me who did who because I have no affinity with you because I've never spoken to you. That's true. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like one of you more than the other. <laughs> you say you that. You say that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? It's so, so difficult because, first of all, 
They blew my mind. Blew <laughs> my mind. <laughs> Obviously, you. I loved the Lost Boy ones, and I loved the the Kill Doc Martins we did. Um, but these, like, I mean, Missy says, you're not going to wear them, are you? I don't well, I want to. <laughs> um, but you don't wear them. Um, <laughs> but just, if anyone's... Look at that. Look at that. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I love that. But I think I like that side better. Just because <laughs> your mom goes to college. <laughs> it's such your a mom, terrible your mom, not your mum. Your mom goes to college. Which is the funniest slur, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Lafonda, um, it's got Kip, his brother, on holding Lafonda sign, waiting for a I am at the bus station. It's got Vote Pedro on, I don't know what this bit's the heel, I guess. Yeah. I don't know what that part of the shoe's called. Um, and it's got um, Napoleon Dynamite in the middle of his. Um, canned heat dance on the <laughs> um, it, they're they're incredible incredible but as you know on television um, on X Factor and such they always talk about the one first that hasn't won <laughs> but the craftsmanship and everything and the illustrations everything on it is so good but, but look at <laughs> look at Team Wolf as a shoe Looks like merchandise straight away. This <laughs> looks like a, a wonderful, wonderful custom <laughs> to me. Um, I love the colour. I love the colours on it. I love the the red just and white. It reminds just me of. Right now, okay. All you need to say is yes, Napoleon Dynamite. It's got Napoleon Dynamite. It's, it, it, <laughs> it looks. It reminds me of something from Breakdance as well. The colours scheme, but, <laughs> but um, Ozone or Turbo would well, actually Turbo would have won these. Uh, um, and the illustrations are fantastic. But as a design, this looks like merchandise to me. Um, it, everything about it looks like a finished shoe. Um, I love the Team Wolf logo there, where I guess a Converse logo would be on a Converse boot. Yeah. Um, there isn't a picture of Team Wolf, but you don't need it because you've got a little sneaky beard coming in there, <laughs> his beard part. Um, and again, um, it's a little bit of an ass lick because it's got kill clothes written <laughs> on the back. Wait. There, when he it's got kill me, clothes I was like, oh, why have you done that? Because yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm like, Oh, it's got kill written on it. <laughs> so angry. But um, again, the Team Wolf logo on the back as well. They look too good to wear because I'd be scared to rough them up. Um, oh, they, well, they should be sealed and protected. You've got the B on the, on the front for beavers. <laughs> <laughs> but unbelievable. Guys, both of them are just so good. You, I would wear them as a pair. So I would yeah. wear, look, look, these are uh, two of my favourite films. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? As a pair, and I think people would be mind blown by these. And yeah. I've shown them to a few of my mates, and they're like, they're incredible, man. They're a piece of art. And um, it's scary when a shoe becomes a piece of art, though, because you want to wear it, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, exactly. Um, but the, yeah, I, I think Team Off's just got the edge just because it just looks like if, 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 if you had the um, franchise on your side, <laughs> you go, that, that's it, isn't it? You, look at the Adidas. Um, logo or color scheme goes with it as well. It all, and, what, and what's great is that his um, team of shoes are Adidas as well, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. They're awkward. not these though. No, no, no. They're not They're high not, top ones. No. Not, I can't remember them. I've got a picture of them actually on my phone uh, because I was making. Have you seen me team off? I made. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was making his shoes, and um, so I've got a picture of his shoes on my phone. I can't remember what they're called. Obviously, the Adidas, but I've got snow pictures. Um, I still got, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Um, take them to court and win. Um, actually, I don't know what they're called. They're like the white ones, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Them? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they still sell them. I don't know if they still no, sell those. Not. You don't need them now, Keith. You've got those. <laughs> yeah. I've, well, actually, I've got uh, um, trainers on my Team Wolf costume. I have it on a mannequin. And the guy who bought it, he said they're, they're the shoes that he wears and they're hard to find. I'm not sure if they are. But, uh, yeah. they, still look, they look very similar, but yeah, these are incredible. I'm really thankful for them. They're amazing. Oh, you're very welcome, mate. Thank you. Yeah, how, how, I do, I, this is something you can cut out if you want, but <laughs> how safe is it to wear them? Oh, you can wear them. Yeah, yeah with the, with they're sealed, protected, yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 We, we see it. We, we put, um, so we use the paints we use, we sent you the kit, didn't we? Yeah. Footwear Care, they're our sponsors. Um, we use their paint, so they're durable as they are. But yeah. then we use their finish, and then we seal it with a scratch-resistant sealer, so it's fully worked. So it won't crack off. 
No, no, no. no. You can, you can I mean, I was really there. surprised by the kill cloves um, boots as well. I just thought, yeah, oh, that white tip's yeah. going to crack off. <laughs> and it, I, I'm, nothing has come off it. And my mate bought a pair, which is very nice of him. for oh, cheers, man. Thanks for the support. <laughs> and um, he, he wears them all the time. I get told yeah. I'm not allowed to wear them on telly because <laughs> they're selling your own product, you're not allowed to. Uh, I went, no one's looking at me feet. Apart <laughs> <laughs> from when I put my foot on the desk. <laughs> And um, yeah, yeah, they, they're still as good as they were when you first sent me yeah. for. We're still listed in our shop, so our collaboration with yeah. you still. So if people want to go buy some Kill Doc Martin boots, <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> Don't be wearing trainers. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Amazing. Yeah, both brilliant though. I do. Thank, Thank you, man. It's yeah, too much to say. It's like, well, do you like Team Wolf or Back to the Future best? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what as well? I was really cocky when we did him. I was really cocky. I was like, I'm gonna win this, win this. And then we sent him to you, and then you got him. And then the next picture you put on was you wearing the exact Team Wolf jersey match. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. I, lost <laughs> yeah. I took a screenshot and sent it to him straight away. I was like, look at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of Team Wolf than I am of Napoleon Dynamite, but I love Napoleon Dynamite. But yeah, he looks lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but as a, as a pair though, together. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, idea. Do, do you do that on your website? Do, can people request? I want my favorite films, I want this one and this one on different shows. Yeah, but we have yeah, like, some weird ones. Yeah. Your own. We've had some mad. What's options. the weirdest? <laughs> we cut this out. Can you put Box <laughs> and Helena on a show for us, please? And <laughs> on the other show, can I have Crash? <laughs> have, you, have you seen Crash? Yeah, which, yeah. which one? Yeah, there's the, um, yeah, the, the, the drama the, one, sexy one. <laughs> Where they make love to each other's cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was, I was the Channel 5 yeah, version. That's the weird one. That, that's oh, one. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's strange. I haven't seen that for years. No, Horrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You've got blood on your jeans. What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for listening to our first podcast. And uh, thanks to Keith for coming on as well. Um, if you would like a chance to win your own Geeky Blinders Customs, then uh, just head over to our YouTube channel if you're not already on there and leave a review on this episode. Um, and we'll pick our favourite um, and they will be the winner Um, we hope you listen again next time and thank you very much